In the last month, I earned 4,470 bucks from my side projects with simple tech stack you can learn in a month. Let me show you. So this income is from August, September data is still coming, but I will be honest with you that will be a little bit less. But yeah, this income is almost passive and I'm spending just a few hours in a week updating apps, fixing some bugs and experimenting with paywalls. In July it was more, in September when months will be finished it will be less because I experimented with my paywalls and a little bit hurt myself. I'm often asked what background I use and which architectures I'm using. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the tools you need to make successful mobile application and start earning money from the App Store. So first that I'm using, that is Swift UI. I, in my all my indie applications, I'm using Swift UI for programming. And yes, Swift UI is production ready. <laughs> Stop asking Swift UI versus UI kit. If you are building indie applications, you can build them using Swift UI. If you are saying that, oh, it is not possible to make fancy user interface, it is. This is pure Swift UI. Just take a look on those titles, how they are kind of moving up, hiding and so on. Also the picture kind of moving around. All of that is just pure Swift UI without any additional libraries, nothing. So you can make good looking, stable applications and that will work just fine. Okay, that's not Swift UI. <laughs> so yeah, I'm actually, uh, besides working on my side projects, I'm also running community for indie app developers. I am uh, working full-time hours as uh, iOS consultant. I just don't have time to work full-time on the applications. But yeah, Swift UI, open Apple documentation, start learning. That's the first thing you should learn. Next one that I'm using often, not every day, but very often, that is Astro application. Astro application is for keyword. Whenever I have new app idea in mind, I am opening Astro application and starting to do research for keywords. The Astro app currently, as I know, is one of the best price performance features kind of value in the market and you are getting unlimited keywords you can do research i have hundreds of keywords and in other apps you have to pay by apps number that you are adding or keywords and that is limiting factor in other applications in this one i like that i don't have those limitations okay another one not programming tool but necessary is wishkit library Wishkit kind of helps you to build those, uh, let's say, if you will go in the settings of my application, you can see feature requests. And that is nice way to get feedback and feature requests from the users to understand what they like, what they don't like, and so on. And there is basically backend and user interface for that as well. So you basically see for what features users are asking and you how to approve them before if someone just spamming you with some random stuff, make bed. <laughs> you just uh, ignore them, you know. So yeah, SwiftUI will help you to build user interface. Astro will help you to rank in the App Store. Wishkit will help to get feedback from users, but you probably will need one more component. You will need data persistence. You have to save users' data. And yes, you can save a little bit in user defaults, like user settings and so on. Let's do not go deep in those things but you need something more and for something more i historically used realm uh, database and that's that's that realm database and the integration for it and syntax is very simple very easy to use and i started to use back in the days when core data was another kind of option and uh, yeah Realm was just much, much more easy to use. And I still have it currently in some projects as a legacy. In this one, for example, I have a Realm database and it still works just fine. But today in new and upcoming applications, I am starting to use Swift data. It is way more easier to use comparing with core data back in the days. So if you are using Swift UI, use Swift data to save users' data and also by adding CloudKit, which is 
easy task to do, you will have data synchronization in between applications. So if user will have, I uh, let's say, app on iPhone and on iPad, and maybe you allow it to install it on Mac as well, all the data will be synchronized in between devices. If user will delete the application, install it again, the data is still connected to this user iCloud account, so you have data persistence without needing to add authorization like, I don't know, for Firebase or Superbase needs and so on. So you, for many cases, can live without kind of real backend. And that's my answer to the question, what backend do I use? I am trying to avoid backend in my indie apps as much as possible. And my indie apps are relatively simple and I can live without backend. And yeah, I have more than one application in the App Store. Let me see. Here are a few apps that I removed by myself, but there are plenty of apps which are still up and running. And I do not use currently anything else but Swift Data, CloudKit or Realm. So that's my suggestion for you as well if you are starting. Try to keep it simple. Do not try to learn mm, backend development and so on. Build apps uh, offline first, and that will be easier for you. Okay, telemetry desk. That is next tool in my toolbox, and it is very easy to implement. Here is one of my application which is using it, and basically by just adding library to the project, you already will get information about active users, about devices, iOS versions, which are used and so on. Here we can see that iOS 18 is growing rapidly fa fast, right? Uh, you will see users data and so on. Basic implementation is super simple. You just add library, you just add telemetry configuration, that's it. And you will already will have information like that. That's basically, I don't know, 10 minute task to implement it. But you can do so much more. You can add that uh, you can collect data from each and every screen to see which functions are used by users, what uh, users are doing on onboarding flow, and so on. This is paid product, but what is their benefit? They are uh, focusing on users' uh, privacy. And uh, that is privacy first application, and they are kind of keeping users' privacy very seriously, so you are not leaking your users' data. Is that important for you or not? I don't know. You can get tools which are free, like um, Firebase Analytics. It's up to you which, one, which tool you use, but I will say one of analytics libraries are must-have in your mm, tool set. And last but not least in my list is Revenue Cat. Revenue Cat is a very important part of my app development process. Yes, you can implement in a purchase on, on your own, and I did that more than once and for more than one project, but currently I am going with Revenue Cat. There are similar products like Revenue Cat, so choose whichever you like the best, So, but I will use this one as example. Why you should use uh, third-party tools for that? So it helps you to get better analytics, one thing. It helps you to build paywalls, easy. It helps you to run experiments. Uh, let me show you example. So let's say here is my paywall. This uh, top of the paywall is my custom paywall, but this bottom part, that is from Revenue Cat. How that helps? So Revenue Cat helping all the purchase handling and they updating all the purchase part whenever Apple release any updates. And I am using custom paywall, but if you are just starting, do not bother to build custom paywalls, just use revenue cat paywalls. Let me show you how that looks like. Here, this is basically the same paywall that I have in my application here. The only difference is I am using here in preview settings, I will change footer condensed. So this is part that I'm using in my application. Here you can, here you can see this part is from Revenue Cat. And uh, if I click to the all plans, I, I see I see view like like that, you know? That's all is from Revenue Cat. And if you are 
if you want to build your custom paywalls like I do, you can do that. If you don't want to bother with and do, do don't want to do that at all, you can get all this full paywall just from one line of code in your application and that's it. And you don't need to create all the screen handle in a purchases and so on. That helps you to save a lot of time, a lot of energy on testing, troubleshooting and so on. Highly recommend to use it. As you see, this list is not long and you can learn all of that in a month. Add one more month and you will have up in the App Store. Will you earn the first thousand from the App Store in third month? Well, that's tricky. With the help of AI tools, Cloud AI, Cursor, development is easier than ever, but selling apps, market them, that still is hard. You will need to learn a different set of skills to come up with good app ideas and learn how to monetize them, how to get ranking them in the App Store. I can help you with that as well. There are plenty of videos on this YouTube channel. Sure, subscribe <laughs> if you want to see more content like that. But um, in October, we are running cohort training to teach all of that. And if you are interested to learn more, there is a link in this description. Okay, see you next one. Bye.